Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. I love scouting fields. I love being out in fields throughout the growing season because you never know what you'll find. This year, one of the insects that I found was the red-headed flea beetle. We'll talk about that today. Well, one of the most important things if you want high-yielding corn is to have good even emergence. We ideally would like to have each plant come up the same day. So we're talking even emergence, even spacing, that type of thing. Well, what do you need to do to make that happen on your farm? We're going to talk about it today. Well, one thing I don't want to see emerge from the soil is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to get this tough weed under control. But first, here's our farm basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Plants have many natural defense systems. We're going to talk about one of them today called allelopathy. Basically what allelopathy is, is when a plant puts out chemicals, its own natural chemicals, into the soil to prevent other plants from growing. Where I first heard about this was, I don't even remember, probably back in junior high or high school, something like that, and somebody had a problem with an alfalfa field. And I just figured, oh, they could just go plant alfalfa. And then somebody told me, no, you can't just plant alfalfa onto alfalfa. Don't you know anything? There's allelopathy. And I go, what? What's allelopathy? Well, basically, alfalfa plants are, are putting this chemical into the soil so no more alfalfa plants grow. So a lot of times, if you want the best stand of alfalfa, you've got to wait probably a year before you can put another stand in if your first stand didn't go very well or if you have to tear it out. Well, allelopathy is a, is a pretty interesting thing. And when you look at some natural defense system like this, well, naturally, man would try to copy it. We look at a plant like the Callistemone tree, and there now is a chemistry that simulates that allelopathy that the Callistemone tree has. So the, that tree would kill all the plants around it that were trying to, to compete with it. Scientists found what substance that was. Now they've duplicated that substance, and we use a herbicide called Callisto, creative name there, right, from the Callistemone tree, to, to do the same thing to control weeds in our fields. Once again, allelopathy is simply a plant putting a natural chemical out into the soil to prevent other plants from growing. Sometimes it's plants of its own species, but sometimes it can be other plants as well. And the whole point is to reduce competition so it has the best chance to grow, survive, and reproduce. Well, if you want your crop to have a good chance to grow and survive, you'll need to control our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10-34-0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Commodity Classic is an early adopter's paradise. This is where what's next happens, where you can meet the people who are changing the way you farm. From the jaw-dropping trade show to outstanding educational sessions to one-on-one -on -one conversations with other farmers from across the nation, you'll be among the first to experience the new ideas, innovations, and technology that can help your operation grow beyond. Spend some farmer time in Anaheim, Tuesday, February 27th through Thursday, March 1st. Discover more at commodityclassic.com. 
We started utilizing the dual react system this year. You can adjust your speed and it automatically adjusts your sprayer tips so you can slow down and you aren't building up huge droplets or you can speed up and you're not throwing a mist that's drifting. Hypro, helping you spray better. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. How do you get even emergence in your cornfield? Well, as we've talked to high yield farmers from around the country and really around the world, they talk so much about you know what, we want every plant to come up the same day, if at all possible. If plants come up at the same time, they have an equal chance for high yield. And you know what, you're gonna have more total yield. So today we wanna to talk about some of the things you may consider on your farm this spring to get that great even emergence. It's really frustrating, Brian, because we ask farmers like that that say, well, you gotta have even emergence. Well, what do you do to get it? They don't have one answer. There's a whole bunch of things that they have to do right. And it really all starts with the planter. And when we think about it, we've got to have a really good seed bed to start with. Now, oftentimes as you're doing tillage in the field, you may be doing tillage at an angle because the residue is flowing through a little bit better or because you're trying to solve some certain issue that's happened out in the field. But as you're going at an angle, uh, it's been talked about for many, many years, really as long as I've been involved in farming, that if you're going at an angle and then you're gonna plant kind of kitty corner across that next spring, you're gonna create some issues there because your planter's always gonna be moving. It's never gonna be an even surface all the way across that planter. Now certainly planters can make some adjustment for that, uh, but getting that tillage right, getting that seed bed right, dealing with the residue that's out there, getting that incorporated and chopped up and so forth, those, key, those are just absolute keys to getting even emergence. Well, one of the big things for us when Darren talks about, hey, get the planter right, Certainly there are adjustments you can do, but it's gotten a lot easier with the precision planting stuff that we've put on our planter. So I think about oh, that down thank you, pressure. Brian. Thank you, Brian. How long did it take for me to convince you that we needed well, to invest in this? And here's one of the things. There wasn't a simple answer though 10 it's, years ago. And it's not a cheap fix. It's not like you say, well, I'm gonna put precision planting parts in my planter and you know, here we go, we'll just roll. Well, then you get the bill and you realize, oh my goodness, this is a big investment. And so some guys really have a hard time pulling the trigger on that. And here's the other thing, if you've got one planter, it's not like you're gonna say, well, I'm just gonna put it on half the planter and not the other half. No, you're gonna do all or nothing. So you don't really have a side-by-side -side you're gonna do out on your farm. So it's tough to understand what that return on investment is going to be. Let me tell you, in our farm, it's been very good. Okay, so the first thing with that is just the down pressure. It really can vary as you go throughout the field because you might have heavier soil, lighter soil. You might have had areas where you mudded the crop out last fall, or maybe just you drove a grain cart across the field and now you've got some extra bad compaction in a certain spot that you didn't get taken care of. That down pressure is going to need to vary based on your soil conditions. And that's something that your planter can now do for itself it's pretty awesome. Well, there have been manual adjustments forever, Brian, but think about it. How often were you jumping out of the tractor, running behind the planter and making big adjustments every time you switch soil types or, or management practices in the field? Nobody was doing that. Maybe on a field by field basis, you may say this field's more lighter, fluffier soil in general, so I'll make a change. This one's a little harder, I'll make a change. But I look at our own farm and we're lifting more often than we're pressing down harder. So it's one of those things that has made a huge difference for us too. All right, so we talked about have a good seed bed, get your planter adjusted right, maybe have precision planting or something else that can make that real easy so your planter can make adjustments itself as you go through the field. All that stuff is really important. But what I wanna kinda of come back to is, look, I love to plant when the soil is cold. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't love to plant when the soil is cold, but I have to plant when the soil is cold. So if you're going to plant when the soil is cold and you still want even emergence, what are you gonna have to do? You're gonna need insecticide. You're gonna need some more fungicide, both seed treatment and in furrow. You're probably gonna wanna use some biologicals and definitely a very low rate of low salt fertilizer. You've gotta do everything possible to pop that seed out of the ground as quickly as you can, understanding that seed's gonna be under a lot of stress. 
we have found that by doing these things, we can go out there and plant our corn when it's 40, 45 degrees and still get just as good and just as even a stand as a guy that wants to wait until the soil temp is 55 degrees. I've got one more thing I want to add to that too, Brian. When we think about moisture conditions, and I talk to farmers like us who are dry land farmers saying, well, my moisture situation is a little uneven going across the field. I get it. That's part of the reason we're moving a little bit of soil with the planter and so forth to try to get some good moist soil right around our seed. If you've got irrigation, right after you plant, you can water that field evenly. You've got a huge advantage where you've got one of the factors that you're going to need for even emergence taken care of. Dryland farmers, yes, we want to have a little bit of moisture in that soil as we're planting and that's going to help quite a bit. Or if we can time it out that, hey, there's rain coming in a few days, let's get everything in the ground and then get some rain naturally on our field, we can accomplish the same thing. All right, the last thing I've got here is planting depth. You know, it's something we've talked about for years, and we start looking at all these other things to even emergence. We can't forget about planting depth. We want even planting depth, obviously. But the other side of that is, what is the right depth? Well, we don't want it at an inch and a half or less, or you're going to have nodal roots above ground. We don't want it at deeper than two and a half inches, or it's going to be hard to have even emergence because your plant's got a lot more to push through. So most of the time when we talk corn, we're talking two inches, maybe two and a quarter inch planting depth. Uh, oh, there is one other thing that I guess I should mention here too, the orientation of your seed. If somebody could ever invent a planter where you could have the germ pointing down, you absolutely would have more even emergence. That is a real key. We've proven that in the lab. Just unfortunately, there is no planter today that can put the germ down on the seed corn all the time. Well, there are planters that can put the seed in just the exact way you want them. They use seed tape, but we don't have that for corn planters just yet. So we have to do all the other things that we can do to impact an even emergence in our cornfields. Well, even emergence is a key if you want higher yields, but so is weed control. Can you identify our Weed of the Week? We raise corn, beans, and then uh, about 7,500 head of hogs a year. About uh, 800 acres of beans this year. All 800 are Liberty Link this year. Our biggest weed pressure is definitely the water hemp. That's why we switched to Liberty Link. We were Roundup ready and uh, we had some resistance. I got sprayed three times one year that didn't even come close to killing them. So the next year we switched to Liberty Link thinking we'd switch back and forth every year and Liberty Link performed so well we never switched back. We have a test plot that had Roundup and Liberty Link right next to each other and the Liberty Link out yielded it in the past five years. It's very important to have good weed control. For one, it just looks better to look at a nice clean field, but yield wise, it's also very important. The Liberty Link system has a 2 plus bushel per acre yield advantage over ASGRO Roundup Ready to Extend Soybeans. More at libertylinkadvantage.bear.us. Always read and follow label instructions. Our Morton is so much more to us than just a building. It's a place where we spend time with friends. It's a place where we hold family gatherings. It's become very important to us. Morton Buildings. For work, for life, for generations. Contact us now during our annual sales event to save on your next building. Smart farming is playing hockey with my son. Alright, sweetie, are you excited to go? Yeah. <laughs> Smart farming is going on more family vacations. Smart farming is getting some much needed rest. Smart farming is spending more time doing what you love. Make it happen with Farm Command. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry, and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss. You'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Well, Darren and I see a lot of different insects each year. Most of them we're not too concerned about, but last summer I just remember getting a phone call from Darren and he said, uh, what do you know about red-headed flea beetles? 
I said, I know about flea beetles, but not much about red-headed flea beetles. What are you seeing out there? Well, generally, Brian, de Brian has determined redheads are a problem. That, that's me and my sister. <laughs> I, I think that's a proven fact. <laughs> but out in the field, redheaded flea beetles, we're doing some feeding in our soybean fields. And so that was one of the insects that, that we had to fight this year. They were at high enough levels that they were actually doing quite a bit of defoliation in the field. Yeah, most of the time defoliation isn't a real big issue, but if you get too much, obviously, then we got to take a look at it. The larval stage of the red-headed flea beetle is something I did not notice this year in our fields, but certainly it was out there because we had the adults present uh, as a long, slender, uh, worm-looking caterpillar kind of thing. That's fine. Uh, I, I don't really see a big impact there. Didn't notice anything with root feeding or so forth in our crop. But as those adults came out, uh, as we mentioned, there was certainly some feeding above ground. And whenever we're trying to deal with a plant like soybeans that's flowering constantly uh, throughout the later half of the summer, well, we've got to get after it with some control. Now, a thread-headed flea beetle, fortunately for us, the control methods were pretty easy. All right, whenever we talk about flea beetles, by the way, I should have, should have said this at the open, with flea beetles, whatever type we're talking about, they like to flee. They like to jump fast, move quickly. So when you're walking through the field, a lot of times you can see them jumping from plant to plant, something like that. So we've seen this for many years, and what we've found has been relatively effective is seed treatment. Because a lot of times these flea beetles are out there early in the season. They're it, there are systemic insecticides like poncho, gaucho, and cruiser that will have some impact on those flea beetles, so that's usually where I like to start. Well, if we're going to use that class of chemistry brand, that is the best time to use it, is right on the seed. You're going to get some good movement through the plant, good early season control. Then post-emerge, we're going to use something else. And we've had pretty good luck with pyrethroids like bifenthrin especially, and now that it's come way down in price, this is getting more, getting used more commonly on many farms. Instead of using the, the cheap first generation pyrethroids, for example, uh, we're seeing guys step up in class and move to bifenthrin. All right, so Darren mentioned post-emerge insecticides. Every once in a while, we'll get somebody saying, hey, could I use one of these neonics? You know, the same chemistry as Poncho, Gaucho, Cruiser. Could I use that post-emerge? Because there are some recommendations out there saying, yeah, these really aren't too bad of options. Well, you know what? They aren't real bad options, but the problem with using those posts is potential for bee kills. We really want to save the neonics. It's the only class of chemistry we've got left for seed treatment insecticides. We don't want to lose them on that side of things. So we would just encourage you, do not use this chemical family, the neonics post. Use something else like bifenthrin or possibly even Lorsman or a combination of the two. One thing that was fortunate on our farm this year is we didn't see the red-headed flea beetles until mid-season. So it was right about the time that we were going out there to spray fungicides and we didn't see any decrease in control whatsoever putting the insecticide in with the fungicide. We've been doing that for years for a number of different insects, soybean aphids, bean leaves, leaf beetles, red-headed flea beetles kind of fit into that same bill that we could do two things at once. Uh, even we did, did some with foliar feeding at the same time as insecticide applications and everything worked fine. Well, the big thing here is we really want you to scout your fields. Scout your fields on a regular basis. If you're seeing problems out there and you can't identify them, even like this red-headed flea beetle, this is the first year we've really seen this on our farm. Okay, find out what it is do some research on it, bring it to an extension agent or your agronomist, something like that. Just find out what the problem really is and then try to determine what the economic threshold is. Now, if there isn't an, ec an established economic threshold, you know what, you're just gonna have to make your own determination. If it appears that the bug is feeding on your crop and it looks like, hey, I might actually have some damage here, I'm worried about that, I know that anytime the plant is opened up, I'm more likely to have a disease issue, then you might be pulling the trigger on that. The other thing is, if you're already out there to spray something else, well, just make sure you pick an insecticide that will kill whatever your original target was, plus this new bug that you found that you've deemed harmful. Hey, one thing that wasn't harmful about the red-headed flea beetles, Brian, is they do like to feed on weeds like lamb's quarters and pigweed. And I love seeing bugs out in a field that start devouring the weeds and like that more than our crop. Uh, but if they do get to a big level in your crop, you will have to treat for them as well. Well, if you want top yields, you've got to get red-headed flea beetles under control if you obviously have enough of them. Well, the other thing that uh, you've got to control if you have enough of them is our Weed of the Week. We're going to tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.
The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is most commonly found in lawns, it's yellow wood sorrel. Well, yellow wood sorrel often gets misidentified as a clover. Just, if you're looking at it from a ways off, it kind of looks like a clover, a little lighter shade of green than many of the lawn grasses that we'll see it growing in. But here's where we see it quite often, is when you've cut your lawn too low, when you've got a pasture that's been overgrazed, or when you've got some stressful conditions. Maybe it's drought stress, maybe it's too much water. Uh, when you get into those situations where the crop or the lawn can't compete very well, well, that's where we see the wood sorrel. All right, so basically if you take what Darren just said and think about that a little bit, what we're getting at here is, you know what, your lawn or your pasture can naturally choke this weed out if you do a great job keeping it relatively tall and thick. You want good crop canopy, that'll stop yellow wood sorrel alone. Well, here's some herbicide solutions as well. I like the new 2,4-D choline. That has done a good job without the volatility and off-target movement. So free, Lex. Yep, I like that. Now, if you're not concerned about volatility, well, dicamba has worked over the years. We've used some yeah, clarity but, in that situation. But, Darren, when you talk about that, you've got to use a very strong rate. Even though this is just an annual weed, it's not a clover, it's not a perennial, you've got to use a high rate or you don't seem to get good control. All right, uh, Remedy has worked pretty well in situations where that would apply. If you're out trying to kill some, some woody species as well as this wood sorrel, that would work. Uh, there, there are just a number of different products Prowl, that can be used. too, I'd throw out, throw out there in lawns, uh, you know, pendimethalin, depending on, on the label and which exact product you're picking, that's not too bad either. That's an early season one. We see this wood sorrel come in a little bit later. With Prowl, you get it on early in the season, you have some residual and at least suppress wood sorrel when it does come up a little later. All right, it is an annual weed, so if you've got a small yard and you just see a few plants, you definitely can pull them. They're easy to pull, they don't have this extensive and huge root system. Uh, if you want the, the chemical control methods, a lot of the weed and feed type solutions have products in them, whether it's pendimethalin or a 2,4-D. But they might not be at a strong enough rate as you actually need. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Yellow Wood Sorrel, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Our Morton is so much more to us than just a building. It's a place where we spend time with friends. It's a place where we hold family gatherings. It's become very important to us. Morton Buildings, for work, for life, for generations. Contact us now during our annual sales event to save on your next building. Unlock the nutrients in your soil with Tag Team LCOXC Liquid Soybean, a triple action biological product that helps improve nutrient access. Together with the LCO molecule, a rhizobia delivers nitrogen-fixing benefits, while an additional microbe makes phosphate in the soil more available. Three powerful technologies in one extra-concentrated formulation. See how it can help your yield potential at MonsantoBioAg.com unlock. The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? 
Well, Don, you take a player like High Energy in, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron, with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. In today's Iron Talk, we'll discuss how to protect your spray booms and equipment from fertilizer and some of the other products that you're spraying. It's no secret that almost any fertilizer can be corrosive. When you're spraying liquid fertilizers like 1034O or 28% nitrogen, you need to be proactive if you'd like to avoid the expense of replacing your equipment every few years. Protecting your boom starts with the way your equipment is painted and with the daily maintenance and cleaning that you do. To begin with, start with a clean and painted spray boom. That doesn't mean you have to have a brand new one, just fix up the one that you've got if it's in good condition. If you do end up purchasing a new spray boom, look for booms with a powder coat paint. Powder coat paint is about 10 times more durable than spray on paints and is resistant to most chemicals. Powder coat paint is also the best for chip protection and holds up well in the sun and heat. In fact, you can even dent equipment sometimes without chipping powder coat paint. If you already own a spray on painted boom, look it over closely for bare metal and paint it at least a couple of days before you start spraying for protection. Wax and polish your equipment at the start of the season for even more protection. Now, I used to think this was just a way for my dad to punish me and my brother or keep us busy so we stay out of trouble. That may have been a side benefit for dad, but there actually was a reason behind him assigning this job. Having a well-polished machine allows you more time to get things cleaned up before the product sets in or begins to corrode your machine. We power wash our spray boom every night when we're applying fertilizer and herbicides because most of those materials are so sticky that if you don't get after it right away, it's tough to clean it up later. So be proactive. Prolong your equipment life. Get powder coat paint when available, wax and polish equipment before use each year, and spray it off every night to protect your equipment investment. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all around grain handling solution. Our conveyor based system uses an 18 inch belt in a 10 inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our show today. If you're looking for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show where we take your live phone calls on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And the brotherly banter will continue again on the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.